Good morning, church. I, I just saw that thing take our picture with our eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Um, yeah, anyway, I think we're live now. Good morning, church. Um, so, so, so good to be in the house of the Lord. Good it's to be. Especially happy. good for me. Yeah. I, I was not here last Sunday. No. You, you know, when you, people say in a kind of a light manner, I'd rather be here in church than the best hospital in town. Well, I was in the best hospital in town last Sunday, and I'm glad to be here in church. <laughs> me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. So thankful. We've been doing a every day what we're thankful for post, and yeah. um, I'm definitely um, most thankful for uh, God delivering Paul out of his um, health hazards <laughs> and continuing to do that, and I'm definitely thankful to be in the house of God today. Um, just what a privilege, what a privilege we have uh, to be able to gather together. I know um, there are criticisms. Um, I'm, I'm looking down to make sure my ringer's off um, so I, I don't disrupt my own self, but um, a lot of people have complaints and ideas about um, where we are in America, the situation in the world, but we are still so, so very blessed. Amen. And we can gather together, uh, be in the house of God, so that's a good thing. And today, in fact, we are talking about um, being in the house of God. Not just being in the house of God, but how we view the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. or taking a Sabbath, or honoring the Sabbath. So we're going to go right into that. Again, we welcome you here today. Um, our, our beginning text is from Mark 2.27, and that says, And he said unto them, and he being Jesus, said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. How about that? Some people interpret this verse to mean that Jesus was providing an excuse for not keeping the Sabbath, as if we needed more of those. But um, keeping the Sabbath as directed in the fourth commandment. But that's not so. There have been many debates over the concept of keeping the Sabbath, which day it is, and which way we keep it among other things. So we're not going to attempt to resolve that debate or that uh, issue once and for all today. But I will say with confidence that God's intention for the Sabbath was not that it would be used for division and condemnation. Amen. Amen. So Father God, I just pray uh, Lord, today, first of all, we thank you. We bless your name. We, uh, we give you all the honor and glory our human flesh will enable us to give. And by your spirit, we want to honor you today, to worship you today in spirit and in truth. And Father God, we, our desire is that we will increase our understanding of what you intended um, for us with regard to the Sabbath, how we keep it, how we honor you on this day. We are seeking your face for a greater understanding of honoring the Sabbath and obeying your commands. We ask, Lord, again in Jesus' name for your presence, for your spirit to be with us and to speak to our hearts. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Um, you know, um, <clears throat> I know you've heard people say, I would come to church, <laughs> but that's my only day with my family. Or I've often heard people say, um, um, it's my only day off. Well, day off is part of the concept of Sabbath. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. okay. But then we have 
not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. And we have that fourth commandment, um, that, that fourth commandment that's right up there with murder, adultery, um, lying, all of those other thou shalt not is a thou shalt honor the Sabbath. Um, so how do we deal with that? And is, is there a new, uh, Testament way that is opposed to the old Testament way? We're going to look at some of that. Um, that fourth commandment that says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them and rested on that seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy, set it apart, amen. That's from Exodus chapter 20. That's verses eight through 11. Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy, keep it holy. Amen. Amen. You know, and, and there's a, a, a lot of, discussion about well what does it mean to keep the sabbath holy and i i, I think one of the primary meanings and, and i've heard several pastors teaching on sabbath uh, but i think one of the primary meanings is that <clears throat> we make it a day of rest mm. that it's a time when we're not encumbered by the things of the world the desires of the world the uh, all of the world politics, mm -hmm. everything that's happening, we rest from that, and we rest in the Lord. Amen. In Him. That is so true. And it, 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 some people consider it restful to come to church. <laughs> <laughs> I do. And in a sense, it's our job to prepare. So we're going to talk about some of those um, those issues in in. You know, of course, there were many, many rules, and one of the one of the issues that evolved is that the religious leaders attached so many rules um, to to orchestrate how you respect the Sabbath, how yeah. you don't work, and the punishment was death. The punishment was death for disobeying that, just as it is for every other sin. Um, so. <clears throat> the traditional Sabbath as practiced by the Jewish faith was from Friday evening sunset to Saturday at sunset. There's really no controversy about that. That's what was considered the Sabbath. And still by many, uh, not only by Jews, but practicing Messianic Jews, Christian Jews, they consider that time as set apart where they do not do work um, as they understand work. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, w I will say about uh, folks who have that conviction, God bless you. Yeah. I, I, Amen. I, whatever uh, conviction of consecration that you make to God, whether it is concerning Sabbath or any other aspect of our walk of faith, I admire you. Amen. And even though I may not have the same perspective mm -hmm. of what Sabbath is, I do understand that we each one are called to live according to the conscience that God has given us. That is so and true. So I just wanted you to know uh, I honor <coughs> you. Pardon me. Amen. And we're going to talk about, in fact, we're going to back that up in scripture in a little bit um the the lord's day as it were um was being observed by new testament christians first century even prior to when constantine decreed that christians 
rather than the Jewish Sabbath, as we just spoke of it, Christians should keep only Sunday rather than the traditional Sabbath. He called it the venerable day of the sun. And that is S-U-N, not S-O-N. So my goodness, talk about throwing a little conflict in there. But the reason that Christians had become keeping Sunday as the Lord's day is because it was the day of the Lord's resurrection. We know that Sunday is actually the first day of the week and not the last day of the week but that brings us into some of the the conflict so we're going to go back to um the 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 reasoning that christians began calling sunday the lord's day was the law was fulfilled in the death and resurrection of jesus and our sabbath rest therefore refers to our ability or our freedom to now rest in him rest in him there remains uh in hebrews chapter four uh if you read that chapter it, it there's a lot of discussion about this but hebrews chapter four verse nine says there remains therefore a rest for the people of god for he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. So that is referring to the concept of once Jesus resurrected, ascended into heaven, he entered into his rest and we therefore through Christ have been able to enter into our rest or our Sabbath. Um, we have seventh day adventist friends and in the, please don't confuse the seventh day of venice with the latter day saints sometimes people <laughs> do that um in in the seventh day adventists are devout with regard to honoring the sabbath day they're devout with regard to how they eat how they live i really respect and admire the way the seventh day adventists um adhere and um orchestrate their lives around what they believe about the Sabbath. We also have a Christian pastor friend who we dearly love, but at one point this friend became so wrapped up in understanding the Jewish way of life and festivals, he started to assert that those who didn't honor the real Sabbath as he understood it weren't even going to go to heaven. So he was kind of connecting yeah, it yeah. to salvation and that's where we kind of encroach over into the territory of religiousness well so much yes you know i, I was hit by a thought just a minute ago that I, I guess i've never thought of it before can a man in my age have a new thought yeah <laughs> old dog whoops <laughs> can't do new uh oh uh oh uh, uh <clears throat> but uh in in uh, scripture, uh, the seven is God's number. God's perfect number. And it's a number of completion. So anything with God in it is complete with God. And <clears throat> as I thought about this, I thought, wow, this the original day of rest, Sabbath, uh, incidentally, Sabbath means rest, Yes. not seventh. Yes. I, for many years, I thought that Sabbath meant seventh. Yeah. But it actually means rest. Uh, and uh, this, the Sabbath, the day of rest, is the seventh day, the completion, the completion of the law if you would. Amen. It just kind of hit me. That's the it. completion of the law. The first day of the week when Christ rose from the dead, he did not do away with the law. That's right. But he completed he it. it all. And now we who are followers of Christ worship him, celebrate his resurrection on the first day of the week. And 
He becomes our rest. That's exactly it. And we have scripture to back that up too. And, and on that note, remember that the commandment itself speaks about not doing work, not causing others to do work. Um, it talks about in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth and rested on the seventh day and blessed it and made it holy. So again, we're admonished in there, not which day, but we are admonished to remember the Sabbath. Remember the work, the work of God the work of the salvation plan of Jesus. Remember that uh, and keep it holy. In Romans 14, verse 5, it says, One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. And that's Amen. what you referred to earlier. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. Amen. We are, as you began to uh, address, we are to rest or be fully convinced of the convictions we have about these things and not condemn others who might not have the same conviction. And we are told in John chapter 5, Jesus was caught healing, which would be considered work oh. according to the law, on the Sabbath and thereby accused of breaking the law. The one who made the law, the one who fulfilled the law, was accused by the religious of breaking the law. In fact, it says in John 5, verse 16, So, because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. In his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at work to this very day, and mm. I too am working. That's a whole even oh, wow. deeper issue is God rested, but has God really rested? Is God ever not at work? For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, he was calling God his own father, making himself, in their eyes, he was making himself equal with God. Wouldn't it just be like political and re religious leaders to put a man to death right after Jesus healed him because it was unlawful? <laughs> for yes, him to yes. be healed kind of you know mimics the kind of thinking we see today but i'm not going there oh, don't I'm go, not there. go in there um romans 8 romans 8 chapter 1 i'm sorry romans chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And again, there is that scriptural um, backing for the concept that we have, through the death and resurrection of Christ, we have been freed from the law of sin and death because it has been fulfilled, not abolished. Amen. So Jesus was constantly trying to teach the spirit of the law, not just to the religious ones, but even to his own disciples. He still tried to teach me, and I've asked him to. <laughs> We're asking him to teach us today. Again, our opening scripture was, and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. It is about the freedom, the freedom um, of life in Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Does that mean we can use that scripture or the 
separate verses as a license to sin? No. We don't ever want to disregard the Holy Spirit Amen. and the teaching of the Holy Spirit. So in Galatians chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, it says, But now that you know God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you are turning back to those weak and miserable forces? Wow, weak and miserable. Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? You are observing special days and months and seasons and years. I fear for you that somehow I have wasted my efforts mm. on you. Is he saying don't celebrate feasts? Don't celebrate special days? No, he's saying understand the spirit of these laws and what it's all about once again. He was trying to teach the spirit of the law. He rejoiced when people understood, and he grieved when they did not understand. I want to understand. Amen. I want to Amen. understand. Amen. And uh, kind of a little uh, rabbit trail here, but you find that whatever side of this issue a person stands on, as far as, well, you've got to use the, this particular day or, uh, of course, on the other side, that it's the day that you have set apart. That's the important issue, not the day itself. It's the setting apart. And as in every, every other aspect of our life, our Christian walk, you can either have a legalistic approach to it or you could have a spiritual approach to it mm -hmm. spirit of the law or letter of the law and I have found that there are people on either side of this issue and any issue really that that are, are legalistic about their application of a perceived law or, or requirement. Uh, so uh, my encouragement on this little rabbit trail, <laughs> my encouragement is be, be tender before the Lord. Amen. Be sensitive to your brothers and sisters. Have Allow God to speak to your heart and, and to bring you a true consciousness of what he would ask of you. Not of your brother, That's but right. of you. That is so and true. Then, and then bless your brother for whatever God puts in his heart to do. But you live according to what God has put in your heart. Amen. And, you know, um, even though it does happen, these rabbit trails, I don't consider that a rabbit trail. I consider that a very, very relevant part of what we're looking at here today. Um this applies to so many issues in our lives, and, and much of it comes from tradition. Uh, I can still hear my father's voice in my head about appropriate dress, and, and uh, you know, we had, we had a set of our own laws. Um, you couldn't wear shorts um, after six o'clock, <laughs> and I don't know where that in, and maybe that was sunset that we had to run in and change our clothes and we never wore shorts in public. It was just a thing. And uh, we knelt down and our hem had to touch the floor or our dress was too short. Some of that is tradition and some of that is good, practical, common sense. Yes, and, and, and again, where is the equalizing factor? The spirit of God Amen. and the guidance and direction and the conviction of our own heart. We aren't to disregard and say, well, we're free. We don't have to pay attention to any of this. We do need to seek these things out and live according to our convictions. In fact, let me step out of this and compare this issue to the one of tithing. Um, people sometimes ask, and I've been asked, whether or not tithing is in the New Testament or whether or not we're still supposed to give 10% or what is our obligation in that area according to scripture. And my answer is yes, 
10% from the Old Testament example is no longer required. Now it's 100%. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Yeah, it's are 100. Are you saying that we are to give 100%? We are. Or? We are to give 100%. Well, how are we going to pay rent? Well, I'm, I'm talking about the issue of where we surrender um, our control over our finances, our control over our time. Those two things are both. In fact, I used to personally believe that that 10% that I was focusing on included at least 10% of my time. Again, we, we set apart times of prayer, but the scripture says we're to pray without ceasing. There's the 100%. God doesn't need our 10 cents on the dollar or our two cents <laughs> for that matter. Um, he wants our 100%. And it's about ordering our finances in such a way that bears witness to where our hearts lie. Um, in the kingdom or in the world. We used to talk to uh, people in a program we had for people who were addicted. You gave the devil 90%, 100%. God's only wanting 10%. Best deal in town. Best deal in town. <laughs> so back to the discussion about honoring um, the Sabbath. I just want to say that whether it's our life, our time, our finances, um, we are ordering our lives in such a way that bear, bears witness to where our hearts lie. That's, that's a great portion of our witness. Do our hearts lie in the kingdom or in the world system? Um, just as we've come to understand that he gave his all, all we have is his. We are honoring God every day, 24-7. Holiness is a command for every moment of every day. Honor the Sabbath. Keep it holy. We are to keep all of our lives holy. In Psalm 113, verse 3, one of my favorite scriptures and a favorite hymn was written from it. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Resting is wisdom for a fruitful life while we are here, an abundant Amen. life while we are here. Uh, you know, it's. I was off on another rabbit trail when you were it. saying it, but <laughs> I, I, I was off into thankfulness because we're focusing on that uh, this whole month uh, and. One of the uh, devotions in, in my thankfulness devotional, I've forgotten just which day it was, 11, 12, 13, 14, somewhere around there. But uh, it, it talks about uh, being thankful in, in such powerful ways. And sometimes when I look at the scripture, the word thankful isn't even in there in that passage. But the thought, the message of thankfulness is. And uh, we must, we must have a spirit of gratitude and thankfulness to God for what he has done and what he is doing and what he will be doing in our lives Amen. as we submit ourselves to him. I just encourage all of us, let's not get caught up on peripheral issues and, and feel like this is we've got to have this debate but rather let's stay focused on the real issue yeah. Jesus the Christ the Amen. Savior of the world Amen. the Lamb who was slain from the foundations of, of the earth I'm telling you folks when we focus on him and him alone and surrender and submit to him follow what he has instructed us to do, we'll have no problem in our spiritual walk. Whatever conviction we have about the day or the way, uh, yeah. the manner of which, you know, some people are convicted that they take uh, communion every Sunday. Yeah. And th that's a good thing. 
Some people are convicted that they take it once a month. Or once a year, even. Or that's where I was going next, or once a year. The, the frequency of it isn't what determines the effectiveness of it. Yes. And it's a reflection of our faith. The way we honor a particular consecration is a reflection of our faith. So that's what I encourage folks today. That is so true. A, a full and complete surrender to him is the only way to live and it's the only way to give. Amen. It's a surrender thing. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going to take a, a second for a rabbit trail if that's what it is. But, um, you know, we've been through a lot of hardship and under attack is sometimes the term we use um, with our own loss in our family situations, circumstances. Um, Paul, uh, not once but twice this week, being rushed to the ER, once by ambulance, once by me driving and disobeying the law with my <laughs> speed. Um, and, and yet um, that foundational underlying faith has brought us through so many people that we know have been going through tremendous tremendous trial and that's when you see what people's faith is made of yes uh, i've had people reach out to me and in their own lives in their own lives they're struggling so i just want to say um this is what god's people are like so giving, 100% giving, 100% willing to honor God in everything that they do. God, whether you view Saturday as the Sabbath or Sunday, isn't as important as whether or not you're willing to live in obedience to God's ways and in surrender to his voice and in awe of his holiness. I am so constantly in awe of him, in awe of him. God cannot be manipulated. He wants our heart. He wants our whole heart, our 100%. So I'm just going to pray again. Father, our desire is to have understanding, each one of us, by your spirit and by your word, to have a conviction of how you would have us honor the Sabbath from now until eternity. Our desire is to walk in your ways, to honor you, to fulfill the work you have for us to do, and be the witness you would have for us to be in these times with regard to giving, with regard to honoring the Sabbath, every thing we do we are committing into your hands once again on this day the lord's day we thank you we thank you we thank you lord hallelujah mighty god we just uh we do give you all honor praise and glory you alone are worthy yes thank you for the Sabbath you've given us and the rest we can enter into through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I'm going to let you go. Before I do, Living Water Church, we're about to have services in-house at 10 o'clock. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting us, for praying for us. Uh, we need you. I hope you need us. If you want to give us a call, 707-630-3167. And we'll be meeting at 10 here at uh, on Railroad Drive. It's 1463 Railroad Drive, right off Central Avenue in McKinleyville. Join us. You are welcome. And we will see you again very soon. Amen. Amen. I have one question. Okay. What day is the Sabbath in heaven? 
Well, <laughs> every day, every day. <laughs> uh, and, and that really, well, that's almost the answer. Uh, but uh, in Hebrews 4, if you read about That's right. Yeah. It actually is referring to our complete Sabbath. Amen. Is heaven. That's right. And it's not a day. There are no days in heaven. It's eternity. It's timeless. So our entire experience of eternal life in heaven is Sabbath. You mean all those questions we thought we'd want answers to? Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Once Amen. we see heaven. Amen. Thank you. And we, again, will see you soon. I hear something.